Well, a special uh, congratulations to our confirmands, their families, and their mentors, Nolan, Noah, Kelsey, Kinsey, Olivia, and mentors Phil and Ian, Susie, Sunny, and Christy. Uh, we're so sorry that we couldn't be together in the building to say how proud we are of you and we love you, but we hope that you know that um, because you've been with us and we've watched you grow. And we're so glad that you were confirmed uh, in the church today. And also a special thank you to our musicians today. Gosh, Brubeck and Dylan in one day. That's just too much, man. That's really cool. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, hellos are a lot easier than goodbyes. <laughs> In hellos, there's so much to learn and to discover, a sense of looking forward and we're oriented toward the future and where we're going to go together when we say hello, to the newness and possibilities and the unexpected things. There's a sense of hope and optimism. This, in a way, is the story of Pentecost. Something new happens suddenly and rapidly that transcends all hopes and expectations and creates a sense of newness and goodwill that unites people across all differences. Instantly, everyone understands one another and speaks in the same language. <laughs> I had no idea what to expect when we met in October of 2014. I think that you know and we know that I expected to be with you only for a short time. Uh, as a transition between the very short tenure of Pastor Todd Bean to whatever would come next after that, just to stabilize things and to be here for a while. And when I came in 2014, there was a real sense that change was needed. There was a constitution committee that was meeting every single day, to re, uh, every single week to rewrite the constitution, filled with people who were able to hold forth for a significant amount of time. <laughs> the first conflict I remember uh, that we had was whether we would roll out the pilgrim and in Indian costumes to celebrate Thanksgiving. <laughs> Seems like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? We've had a lot of changes since then, made a lot of progress since then. It's not like it was then. It's the thing about hellos. They're really about openness and possibility and a kind of intentional innocence, unity, understanding is easy to achieve before the work begins. As Peter stands to deliver the first sermon of the Christian church, what he does is interpret the struggles of the past in light of the current uh, challenges and those things as being over and done and fulfilled because something new is happening. A new world, a new life is opening that will utterly transcend all of the past divisions and difficulties. Unite people. Hello to the new. Hello to hope. Hello to change, to possibility, to unity of purpose, and above all, to a common understanding. Goodbyes are another matter altogether. As we have been finding in our Easter readings, goodbyes raise the specter of abandonment. So Jesus says, I will never leave you orphaned. The fear of exposure. So Jesus says, in my father's house are many dwelling places, plenty of room, plenty of shelter. 
goodbyes are hard because goodbyes include grief. Something dies, and we are forced to work through our feelings over the past about what we have done, about what we have failed to do, about what we would have done differently. So, not surprisingly, in the church, our antidote for goodbyes is to eat cake. Tell stories to remember the past in a way that gives us hope for the future. But you can't eat cake through a face mask. <laughs> and we are in the process of saying goodbye in ways that are very hard in a very difficult time. The heart of goodbyes always remains the same. As Jesus tells the disciples as he prepares for his leave-taking, he says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. After our hellos, we accomplished so much together. So many good and new things. Far too many for me to name in this brief time that we have together this morning. And along the way, so many good people served as our moderators and on ministry boards and as liturgists and lectors and ushers and Sunday school teachers. So many musicians shared their gifts with us. So many of our people turned out to feed the hungry and provide essentials for the needy. There was so much joy during children's time and celebrating baptisms, and our hearts were moved as we remembered our loved ones on All Saints Days. We have improved this lovely building this week, we flipped the switch to turn on our solar energy. We have accomplished so much together, friends. And we have made mistakes. We have let each other down. Hurtful words have been said. And the experience of getting work done and of making changes and trying new things has challenged our unity of purpose and our common understanding that marked our hellos. Hmm. But we are given the power to forgive one another our sins. As Jesus says, but we are also given the dark power of retaining sins. To forgive sins opens us to hold our hearts open to the good God has given us in a way that prepares us to say hello with honest, open integrity when the new comes again. To retain sins hurts us all together, grudge and bad feeling polluting our hellos and dooming us to endlessly repeat the sins of the past. Forgiveness frees us from the past and opens us to the future God promises us. Retaining the sins of the past blocks us from accepting the truth that we have all done the best that we could do and we did an awful lot of good together, and some of the good we have done was really hard on us. <laughs> As with any relationship, our relationship depends on our willingness to forgive one another and to release one another from the past so that we can say hello to the future God promises us. In the end, all of the goodbyes we experience and all of the times we take our leave from what we have come to know and love and depend on 
are ways we also practice hellos. God raises us up to new life after every death. The Spirit always swoops in and unites us together and gives us new understanding and burns away old disagreements. And we find yet again the experiences of the past have prepared us for the future that God is calling us to. I can't say thank you enough to this congregation. For the many of people who have said the same thing these past few weeks, we are sad to see you go, but glad you can be with your family. We understand and support your decision, though we don't like it very much. In this understanding is much forgiveness, which gives us all hope for the future as we say our goodbyes. God bless you, friends. God bless you.